In this section, we're going to be looking at the binomial distribution. And I'm going to introduce the concepts with an example. So consider rolling three fair dice. Find the probability of getting 0, 1, 2, or 3 sixes. So let's represent getting a 6 with a 6 and not getting a 6 with an n. So the first thing that could happen is that I could get three numbers that aren't sixes. So I could get n, n, n. Or I could have get n, n, then a 6. Or I could have got n, 6, n. Or 6, n, n. Or I could have got n and two sixes. Or a 6, an n, and a 6 or a 6, a 6, and an n, or finally a 6, a 6, or a 6. OK, so I've actually got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Eight different ways of, um, well, eight different possibilities here. OK, now it's easy to link these up because we've got um, one situation there where we get three, uh, well, three non-sixes. We've got three situations here where we've got uh, one six occurring. We've got three situations here where we've got two sixes occurring and one situation where we've got three sixes. Now it makes sense as to why we have eight because we've got two choices. We've got either 6 or not a 6. So 2 times 2 times 2. So 8. So I've got one possibility here of getting no 6s whatsoever. Now the probability of getting a 6 is 1 out of 6. It's a fair die, so it's 1 out of 6. But that's not happening at all. So that's not happening any times. So yeah, that's happening to the power of 0. But I am getting not a 6 uh, three times. And the probability of not getting a 6 is 5 sixths. So this first probability, if we use our calculator, 5 sixths cubed, and that's 125 over 216. Now we've got three possibilities of getting 1 6. So that's 1 6 to the power of 1. And no 6s, so 5 6. And that's happening twice. And so it's squared. Because it's kind of like a big probability tree. OK? You're, you've got to think of this as kind of like a big probability tree where I can either get a 6 or not a 6. Then I can get a 6 or not a 6, a 6 or not a 6. Then I can get a 6, not a 6, 6, not a 6, 6, not a 6, 6, not a 6. So I've got these eight final options. And I've got one way of getting these three 6s. Okay? And I've got three, uh, one way of getting the three not 6s. I've got this way here of getting 1, 6. I've got this way of getting 1, 6. And I've also got this way of getting 1, 6. And so that is the three, OK? The fact that there are these three possibilities. Uh, I've got 1, 6 and 5, 6. So 1, 6. And that's happening once. OK, so there's my once there for that one. And here is my once, oh sorry, here's my once for that one, 6. So the 1 6 is happening once in each of these cases. And the 5 6 is happening twice in each of these situations. And so that is why I'm multiplying along the branches and then I'm timesing by 3 because I'm getting 3 of the same probability out. So we have 3 times 1 6th 
times by 5 sixths squared, and that's 25 over 72. Now, in exactly the same way, we can do it for 2 sixes. So we have 3 times, well, we want the 6 to appear twice, and we want not a 6 to appear once. So we have 3 times 1 sixth squared times 5 sixths, and that gets me 5 out of 72. And finally, we have one way of getting a 6 3 times, and not a 6 0 times. So it's 1 sixth uh, cubed, which is 1 over 216. OK, so I have found the probability in each of those three cases. Now, these numbers here, 1, 3, 3, 1. Now, they relate, you might recognize them, to Pascal's triangle. Now, Pascal's triangle looks like this. If you've never heard of it, Definitely look it up. Very famous triangle. Very, very useful in this, OK? And how the numbers are generated is that the ones are always down the outside. And each number inside is the sum of the two previous terms above it. So 3 is the addition of 1 and 2, 6 is the sum of 3 and 3, 10 is the sum of 6 and 4, that 5 is the sum of 1 and 4, and so on. And what we find is that 1, 3, 3, 1 is this row here. Now, we have a shorthand notation for that. And we learnt it in the previous section when we were looking at combinations. But I didn't link it in there. OK? So this number is actually 3 choose 0, or 3 NCR 0. This is 3 NCR1, this is 3 NCR2, and this is 3 NCR3. You can check it on your calculator. So what that means is that your NCR button actually locates a particular value within Pascal's triangle. So the NCR button doesn't just solve combinations questions but it also picks out a specific number from Pascal's triangle that we need to use. So this 1 is 3 choose 0. That 3 is 3 choose 1. This 3 is 3 choose 2. And this 1 is 3 choose 3. And this makes perfect sense, because out of the 3 rolls of the die, I want two sixes to appear. Out of the three rolls of a die, I want one six to appear. Out of the three rolls of a die, I want zero sixes to appear. OK? So it all makes sense. And it all comes together like this. And using this NCR button, this uh, part of Pascal's triangle, will enable us to solve much harder problems. And I'm going to show you an example of that, which is an extension of this problem, in the next video.